This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids, reviewing exam number three. I'm going to do a couple of pages here. We had a page on combined loadings where we had a, a bent bar with two forces on it, had two different configurations for the, the green test and the blue test. We had given these loads and we were told the cross section is square and the area is 9.0 inches squared. That means by simple math that it's 3 by 3. Looks like this. So uh, Y for our bending calculation is 1.5 inches, half of its height, distance from the neutral axis to the extreme fiber. It's also C in that formula, MC over I. I is just BH cubed over 12. Well, I wrote 3. Anyway, so it's BH cubed over 12. So it's 6.75 inches. My number is right. Okay. First thing I need to do is figure out the, do a little statics and figure out the moment at this section AA, which is where I want to know where the stresses are. Some moments about that point, and I get that. I've got 30 pound force times 3 feet minus 20 pound force rotating in the other direction times 2.5 feet is equal to 90 minus 50, 40 pound feet. Very important that I note that I've got the bigger moment is coming from the 30 pounds, so it's trying to rotate that way. So it's creating compression on the right side of the section. I'm going to use that here in a minute. It's pushing on that set side and pulling on the left side. Similarly but opposite kind of is on this blue test. I had a 20 pound moment at this distance and a 40 pound force there. So the moment's 20 times 3 minus 40 times 2 works out to be negative 20 or by my sign assumption here. Meaning I have compression on the left side of the section. The bigger moment is coming from this 40 pounds so it's pushing, hope you can see that, on this left side of the section. So <clears throat> in both cases I do some of, some of forces in what I would call the Y direction kind of. I got 20 pounds down I assume tension on that face there and so I get 20 pounds up so that is tension at that section. Same way here I got 40 pounds down in the negative Y direction and I got a reaction assumed internal reaction of positive or tension that in force so it's a 40 pounds tension so both sections are under tension and the, the moments are reversed on both color each color of the test okay, the first thing I was asked was the maximum bending stress is MC over I and to do the calculations just plug in the numbers 40 for the green times 12 I need to convert pound feet into pound inches so I get Multiply by 12 there. C is 1.5 from over here, and I is 6.75. Get plus or minus 106.7 psi. We'll talk about that stress distribution, but it looks like this. You remember zero at the neutral axis. On the blue test, it was just the moment 20. I'm plugging the same numbers, plus or minus 53.3 psi. So that was the answer to that question number seven. Number eight was the axial stress is just P over A or N over A as I've called it up here. For the green test it's 20 pounds divided by the cross-sectional area of 9, 2.22 PSI tension. Blue, there's the numbers, 40 pounds, you get 4.44 PSI. Both of them are those are in tension. Finally, I wanted to know the stress profile at AA, at that section. Okay, the profile due to bending is going to be plus or minus sigma max here at these points. And I need to combine loading, add that to my axial stress, which is just uniform over the entire surface like that, with that being sigma axial from up here. So, the green test, I had compression on the, on the right. That means I had tension on the left. So I've got this tension of 106.7 
plus the tension of the axial stress gives me 109 approximately 109 psi on the left side of the section going down to zero and then it, I have a sort of shifted neutral axis and then I have compression or negative stress on this side which is the negative due to bending 106.7 plus the axial which is tension so I get negative 105 on this side similarly on the blue test I had compression on the left so I have the negative 53.3 from bending on the left plus the axial stress giving me a negative 48.9 on the left and then on the right I have tension and tension plus 53.3 from bending plus 4.44 from axial give me 57.7 psi so your drawing should look like that okay question number 10 was on the next page and it was a thin wall pressure vessel and I was wanting to at a point A is like an air compressor to determine sigma 1, sigma 2 which are the principal stresses and tau xy <clears throat> Hopefully that jumped out at you. At the principal stresses, the shear stress is zero, but we'll cover that in a second. For the green test, I was given these things, these values, internal pressure 120 psi, internal diameter 30, wall thickness 0.25. So my hoop stress is the bigger one. It's the one going around a hoop around the, the pressure vessel. Here's the numbers. The formula is PR over T. Plug in the numbers. Remember to use the radius, internal radius is what this R is, not the diameter. So I divided by two. Wall thickness there, so I get 7,200 psi. The longitudinal stress is the one in the longitudinal direction of the cylinder of the air pressure uh, pressure tank, and so same numbers, just divide by two, so I get 3,600 psi. Remember at the principal stresses, which these are, there is no shear stress, so it's kind of a trick question. The answer is zero for that here. You weren't required to do this, but here I plotted it on a stress element. For the blue test, here's the numbers, 150 PSI, 36 inch diameter, 0.25 inches wall thickness. Plug in the numbers, I get 10,800 PSI for the hoop stress, or sigma 1, the principal, maximum principal stress. Sigma 2 is half of that, 5400 PSI, and the shear stress is zero, plotted it.